Fractal design cases have inspired modders all over the world who have built some amazing systems like this dark side themed case by George Priscellus showcasing the spacious internals in the Define S, or Metallic Acid, a mini ITX system by Justin Olson featuring a white, black, and red color scheme and a super clean layout in the Define Nano S. There are a ton more awesome builds like these on Fractal Design's modding series page, so check it out via the sponsor link in this video's description and get inspired for your next project. Excellent! I'm so conflicted right now, guys. I have two big old packages that just showed up from AMD and I can't find my Spyderco. Kind of disappointed. Uh, I'm gonna have to stick with my, my standard box opener here, but uh, here is a huge, crazy unboxing. I'm assuming this must be Threadripper. You guys probably already know because I'm probably gonna put it in the title, but uh, enjoy and live vicariously through me as I gorge myself on the unboxing of uh, really crazy high-end computer parts. Here goes. It's really heavy too. <laughs> Try to do one at a time. Okay, so full disclosure, I, I sort of opened these already. They showed up yesterday, and I couldn't wait that long. But I didn't open the stuff inside. I just I had to make sure that it was what I was expecting. Um, there we go. All right. So first off, we have what appears to be a Pelican case. All right, so this is a, a big old Pelican case. On the front right here, it says AMD Ryzen Threadripper. It has a plaque with my name on it, um, which is which is right there too. So this does appear to be personalized to some extent. That's pretty cool. Um, and let's uh, let's open it up and see, reveal the mystery that, that lies inside. Oh. All right, um, there it is. And uh, as you can maybe tell from the top-down view. We got Threadripper. It looks like not just one Threadripper, but two Threadrippers, as well as this this thing right here, which is a little. Hold on, let's 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 pop this out first. Wow. So this is a, an acrylic presentation piece. It says Ryzen Threadripper unlocked, unrestrained, uncompromising. It says 2017. And then the Threadripper CPU itself it's in that's in there, and it is non-functional because at least that's what it said on the packing list that they gave me. Uh, but it says AMD Red Ryzen Threadripper presented to Paul Heimlich, 40 of 250. So I have a limited edition uh, Threadripper uh, thing here, which I, I don't know where the other 249 of them are, but that's pretty freaking sweet. So inside we have, uh, so this, it looks like this got, did get banged around and shipping just a little bit. There's some foam protecting it, but there's clearly at the very top here, there's like a little piece with a connection point that's supposed to attach to the top, which I think must have gotten busted up in shipping house. So that, in shipping somehow is what I should say. So that's, that's unfortunate there. But um, inside are our two Ryzen Threadripper retail packages. This is a Ryzen Threadripper 1950X the full-on 16 core 32 thread version oh there's lights inside this is a specially custom designed case with lights inside and then second up we have the uh, ryzen thread ripper 1920x 12 core 24 thread version and both of them in their cool looking new retail boxes now inside the actual packaging there's actually two rings in there that um, it's just, I think what might have happened was it got banged around in shipping. This, this is a little sensor right here at the top, and um, when that is connected, or no, when it's disconnected, yeah, so when it's disconnected, the light's off. So this was actually built so that when when you open the case up, that's supposed to, to, to touch, and then the light's supposed to show up and, and shine through the, the Threadripper boxes. Unfortunately, maybe because it was on during shipping, thanks to getting uh, like, like bumped around or something. Maybe the battery has died. Um, I'll I'll see if I can figure that out. But I do think this that's all that's what's in here. It does appear to be all that we have inside this retail uh, inside this box, apart from more information about the Pelican case. Hey, it's a Pelican case too. That's pretty sweet. Pelican cases are nice. Let's get box two going up here. And again, we have well no. Pelican case in here, but again we have Ryzen presentation going on. AMD did did some extra work on this here. They have this insert that goes in there with more unlocked, unrestrained, uncompromising. All right, so it's a bunch of 
empty AMD boxes. Just use spacers. All right, memory. Motherboard. A uh, cooler. Power supply. Oh no! Things are being broken. Ah. Okay, so apart from this uh, little plexi thing, which just just makes fun noises. Okay, that's fun. Uh, but apart from that, we have the RG Zenith Extreme motherboard, X399 socket TR4 motherboard uh, from ASUS. That's a beastly board. That's like one of the highest end ones that's available at launch, of course. We got a couple memory kits. These are uh, from G-Skill, the Trident Z RGB kits. I have worked with these before. These are uh, 3200 speed, cast latency 14, four total sticks, eight gigs each. We have the Thermaltake Tough Power Grand 1200 watt power supply, because you gotta have power. Uh, and then we have the Thermaltake Flow Ring 360, which is a 360 millimeter radiator, closed loop, uh, all in one liquid cooler. Uh, and it does have the standard Ace Tech mounting uh, solution as far as the CPU pump block, which means that it will work with the uh, bracket for TR4 that's included with the Ryzen processors. Um, and you know, there's supposed to be an SSD in there according to the packing list too. There was supposed to be a 960 Pro, but I don't see it. I don't... I got all this stuff in front of me. I can't be disappointed that there's no 960 Pro SSD, I guess. All right, let's, uh, so I, since I don't want this video to take too long, I'm gonna skip most of the other stuff as far as taking it out of the box. Most of that stuff is uh, already out to some extent or another. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on the motherboard and then the processors too. We'll start with the ROG Zenith Extreme motherboard and we'll just do a quick unboxing here. Uh, I was able to take a look at this board for the very first time at Computex this year. Although this uh, should obviously be the actual retail shipping version. I'm not sure if there were any last minute changes made between the one that they had on display at Computex and this one here. But um, if there are, I probably won't be able to tell you what they are. Uh, but other than the motherboard, you're getting a, a, a set of stickers because gamers love stickers. Uh, and then we also have, uh, wow, just a ton of accessories. And again, I'm not going to go over all these, but we got stuff like, like uh, Wi-Fi antenna here, as well as a bunch of SATA cables, other cables for connecting up very various, various peripherals. SLI bridges going all the way to four-way. Is that still a thing at all? Uh, and then we also have this guy here, which I, I will show you. Really oh, wait, we got a couple cool things. This is a, I believe this is a 10 gigabit Ethernet card, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, ROG Arian 10G, so it comes with a 10 gigabit Ethernet card. Okay, let's get both these out. Stuck. So a couple of cool accessories just to highlight really quickly. Uh, the ROG Arian 10G uh, Ethernet card, so that's cool. 10 gig ethernet in the box. Just takes up a little uh, PCIe. Looks like it needs a by four slot. And then this is a dim dot two slot. And this is a unique thing that Asus did uh, with the highest end range of motherboards that they've been working on in the RG series. The basic idea is that when you have an M.2 uh, drive, like especially a really fast NVMe one, if you have it in certain areas of the board, it can get very hot. So Asus decided to take a dim interface, dual inline memory module, same as your uh, you know, your DDR4, and basically make a riser card out of it. So that slots in over here into the DIM.2, and then it has mounting points on the top of it for two, uh, one on either side, uh, M.2 NVMe SSDs, going all the way up to 2210 length on either side. So that provides you with a, a better location for a couple M.2 SSDs. Beyond that, this board is just absolutely beastly as far as it looks like it's packed with stuff. Uh, it is EATX form factor, so it's a little bit wide, but it's got all the modern stuff that you'd want on a motherboard. Like it's got a USB 3.1 front panel header right there uh, that ASUS has been working on, and we're actually starting to see cases with those. 
Looks like massive uh, power delivery, dual uh, eight pin power connectors. Of course, can't see what's underneath there as far as the actual modules going in there, but I'm sure Asus did a good job, they typically do. And then we've got like some supplemental power for the PCIe slots down there if you are going for a bunch of graphics cards in a configuration or something like that. And then this has RGB support and uh, it's also got a fixed uh, IO shield on the back there. So the IO shield is, you can never, you can never forget it. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave the plastic on it for now too though. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that, I'm sure, in the future. And then that TR4 socket. I, I get to install my first Threadripper into a TR4 socket very soon, and I'm looking forward to that. And now I should unbox one of these Threadrippers. What do you, what do you guys say? Um, this is, again, brand new packaging, completely new design from AMD, and uh, I think it's something that is fairly unique looking definitely i mean i haven't gotten excited about packaging for a cpu in a, in a while granted you know it's kind of a silly thing to get excited about but you know the unboxing experience you guys are watching an unboxing video right now so why don't complain to me um but here's how you open it it's got a rip here uh indicator right on the side right there so rip sticking with the thread ripper theme peel that up that will uh break the seal and now my package has been opened uh, so we'll get rid of that, and then uh, it's just some closed cell foam as far as the actual container here goes. And it looks like it says, looks like that just pops off top like so. And then internally we have a, an internal thing, which is like plastic rather than foam. Uh, also tucked away in here is a little Threadripper booklet, so that tells you all the stuff you need to know about Threadripper. Got your Threadripper uh, case badge on there, because, you know, case badges, still a thing. Uh, and it looks like a sticker and, you know, your basic warranty information and that kind of thing. So that's good to have. And then this in here is your little kit. Uh, since the TR4 socket does have a Torx uh, actual screws in there that you need to, to undo, it comes with a little Torx wrench. So you're good to go with that. It's, uh, is it ratcheting? It's not ratcheting, but that's okay. And then here, ah. Uh, I can get it to come out. And then here is your actual retention bracket, and this will be compatible with basically any standard Ace Tech uh, cooling solution, which is a really wide variety of them, going all the way back to like the early Corsair units. So all those ones that have the combo pump block on the front and this typical teethed uh, circular retention mechanism, you can pop that on. And even though the, the, the contact area does seem kind of small in those, uh, it is still enough to go over the die uh, that's on, on the actual threader for processor itself. Speaking of which, let's move on to that. So I, this this has a uh, indicator on the back. It says unlock the power. So I guess we turn that. Ah, a little crank cranks and opens, and then that's where the thread ripper is attached. It actually <laughs> feels very substantial when you pull that off. Uh, other than that. This appears to just be the optics of the Eye of Sauron, or whatever whatever you want to call that in there. Um, just giving it that sort of multi-panel view uh, that looks pretty cool and gives a nice visual as you first open it. Uh, so now that the power is unlocked, what do I do? All right, it's got a metal bracket here. Pop that off over the top. And then this, and what happens? I don't know what to do. Power's been unlocked, but... <laughs> you push on these? Oh, all right, all right, I figured it out. These tabs, you squeeze these little tabs, theoretically, and then it pops off like that. Hey! And then you've got your Threadripper CPU right there, which comes with its little carrier piece. Uh, oh, and I'm gonna try not to touch the bottom because that's where uh, all of my LGA contacts are. Man, these things are heavy. So this plastic piece uh, around the processor you actually want to hang on to because that is part of the installation procedure. And I guess since I'm right here and I have a motherboard, let's do my first ever TR4 socket CPU installation, which I've only seen in a video by MSI so far. So let's, uh, let's get on top of that. Wow, like the lid is on a spring. It like pops up by itself. It's kind of kind of fascinating. Uh, these are captive screws. Just learned that. That's also pretty useful. And then so once that top lid is up, there's a secondary lid right here, which slides up just like that. 
and that you can maybe see has a little piece of plastic that's in it and that is sort of a dummy that uh, sits in there and just slides out on the rails. It's got this kind of a rail system like that. It slides in and out of. I guess it wasn't held in there quite as sturdily as I thought it was. Alright, uh, beyond that you do have a plastic cover here to protect the LGA socket and that pops off like so. And then the nice thing is here no triangle in the corner. Oh, there is still a triangle in the corner, never mind. There is still there is still a triangle in the corner here if you're really confused, but I mean there's only one way for this to, to drop in, so uh, let's do it like that. Somehow I thought this would be smoother. Oh, I see, alright. So it doesn't just stay on the reels. You, you do have to kind of guide it in on that lower part. But once that once that lower part is in there, it just drops in the rest of the way. So that then that drops down. Then the TR4 socket cover goes on top. And then you just tighten the screws down. Which I imagine you'd still want to do in a sort of a cross pattern. Couldn't get those screws to catch it first, so maybe do these two at the bottom first. Oh yeah, they are numbered, one, two, three. I should pay closer attention. There we go. Close, one, two, three. All right, that open, three, two, one. See, I should read stuff before I just start doing it. It's all right though, I figured it out, even, even, even being ignorant. So guys, there it is, my first ever unboxing of a Threadripper processor, my first ever installation of a Threadripper processor on the TR4 socket, and a lot of really cool and exciting new hardware to play around with, and I'm going to get right to it, and I will be bringing you guys more content with my feedback, my benchmark numbers, and everything like that on this platform, as well as uh, whether or not I think you should buy it. Let me know in the comments section if you're considering investing in the Threadripper platform right now, the thumbs up button and of course if you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll be back with more content coming at you very soon. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.